This is going to be a two-part video for passive sentences and shifting vowels. A passive sentence is gener generally one in which something is happening to the subject. For example, in English, I was helped is passive because the subject is undergoing the action. It is I, the subject, that is getting helped. An active sentence has a subject that is doing the action. So if I said, I helped him, the sentence, I helped him, is active because it is I, the subject that is doing the helping. For every active sentence, there is a passive sentence that means the same thing. The girl helped the dog is active, and the dog was helped by the girl is its passive form. Most languages of the world has many ways of forming both active and passive sentences. There are exceptions, but clallum is not one. However, clallum passives differ from English passives in two important respects. The most obvious difference is that in clallum, a passive sentence is formed just by adding a suffix schwa and a hooked n to the basic transitive verb. The second difference is that in English, the passive is always optional. In English, you can always replace a passive sentence with its active form. In Clallam, however, there are certain situations where the passive might be used. Just as with two basic types of object pronouns discussed in the object pronoun video, there are two basic forms of passive, a control form where the actor is in control and a non-control form where the actor is not in control. Another feature of passives in English is that they can have an actor mentioned in a by phrase, as in, she was helped by the boy. Clallam can add actors in a similar way. So review the preposition word order video on how the preposition a uh, is used for this purpose. Someone helps me. Someone helps us. Someone helps you. Someone helps you folks. Someone helps you. The control passive is formed with the tongue ending. The T schwa hooked end. Notice that in each example, it is the subject that is undergoing the action. Also, that each of the column sentences has three possible English translations. The control passive implies that there is an actor who is in control. So let's review the models for the object pronouns listed in the object pronoun video. Notice that there is no examples given for he, she, it, they helps or help me, or for he, she, it, they helps, or help you. To translate English sentences with a he, she, it, or they into Clallam, you must use a passive sentence. There is no way in Clallam to say a sentence meaning he helped me except with the passive. The last of the models shows that the only situation in which the passive is optional as in English. Passive is optional only if both subjects and objects are he, she, it, they. So if we compare, quinang it, he, she, it, they help him, her, it, or them. And then quinang he, she, it, they was or were helped. Some complications, shifting vowels and the I stem. Before we can begin translation exercises with the passive, we must cover some basic rules of clallum pronunciation that complicate the grammar a little bit. A clallum word is composed of a stem or root and may have one or more suffixes or prefixes. We're going to concentrate right now on stems and suffixes. A clallum stem usually has two consonants and one vowel. So for example, the stem mis, meaning choose, usually has a t-transitive suffix, making the word meast, choose it. There are three basic kinds of stems in clallum, weak stems, strong stems, and zero stems. The difference among these types has to do with what happens to the accented vowel with the suffix, when the suffixes are added. 
in weak stems and an accented bell moves to the right, switching places with the consonant to the right. An example of a weak stem is mis, choose it, or mis, choose. When a suffix is added, the I and the S changes places. The I moves to the right of the S. So mis, choose it, becomes sitem, is chosen. When the passive suffix is added, the schwa after the M is inserted to help pronunciation. In strong stems, the accented vowel does not move. And in zero stems, there is no accent in vowel. The schwa gets inserted after the stem to help pronunciation. This brings us to the I stems. Zero stems can take a special I suffix to make a new stem. This I suffix has been called persistent because of the meaning it adds. Here are some examples of the basic stems with and without the I. Quet, and then it would be quit. Chat would be cheat. As you can see, the I as the meaning of persistence or continuing result. Holding something is the continuing result of taking it. Knowing something is a continuing result of figuring it out. When the I stems occur with the passive, the I moves to the right of the T. As an example, the stem for take, with I and the T transitive becomes quit, hold it. This then becomes quitum when the passive suffix is added. This table summarizes weak, strong, zero, and I stems when the event is controlled. So how can you tell whether a stem is weak, strong, zero, or an I stem? Here are some basic rules of them. C equals consonant. So zero stems ending in T always have that shape, consonant, consonant, accented schwa, T. The I stem ending in T always has this shape, where it's consonant, consonant, accented I, and then T. And, and third, there is no way to tell if the stem is weak or strong just from the stem ending in T. However, most other stems are weak stems. And that's it for the first half of passive sentences and shifting vowels. Bye.